Today, someone in America develops Alzheimer's disease every 68 seconds. But this frequency is expected to increase in the next 30 years to over one case every 33 seconds. Currently, Alzheimer's disease is the sixth most leading cause of death. However, more and more people will die from Alzheimer's if we do not find a cure. My name is Kim Steinek, and today we talk about why it is unbelievably difficult to find a cure for Alzheimer's disease. Before we start, I recommend you to watch the first episode if you haven't done so, in order to be updated. So, let's start. If we want to find a cure for Alzheimer's, we first need to distinguish between a cure and a treatment. Treatment means that a patient receives medical care in order to lessen the symptoms and the effects of a disease. Oftentimes, treatments only help to control the disease. This means that patients often require treatments for the rest of their lives. If the patient does not have a specific condition after we've treated him, then we say that we have a cure. So a cure means that we do not see any symptoms of the disease after we've stopped treating the patient. Of course, we know quite a few different drugs in order to reduce the symptoms of Alzheimer's. And the usage of these drugs depends on the stage of the patient and the severity of the disease, among other factors. One class of these drugs are the so-called acetylcholine esterase inhibitors. Inhibitors means that the enzyme acetylcholine esterase is blocked. You see, acetylcholine has been implicated with learning and memory. And deficits in the production of acetylcholine are often found in Alzheimer's patients. By blocking acetylcholine esterase, we can try to increase the levels of acetylcholine, which then slows down the progression of Alzheimer's disease. Currently, medications such as Resodyne, Exelon, and Aricept are on the market. And if you're interested in these kind of drugs, I've provided you a publication in the supplementaries. Acetylcholine esterase inhibitors are a kind of indirect way to slow down the progression of Alzheimer's disease. A second way to treat Alzheimer's in a similar way is the treatment with memantine. Memantine is an N-methyl deaspartate receptor inhibitor, or NMDAR inhibitor. You see, Alzheimer's patients often have dysregulated glutamate levels, which can be harmful for the central nervous system. By preventing high activities of NMDAR, we can normalize the glutamatergic system. Currently, memantine is given to Alzheimer's patients which have moderate or severe forms of Alzheimer's. And memantine, similar to the acetylcholine esterase inhibitors, do only indirectly slow down the progression of Alzheimer's instead of directly tackling the underlying causes. Okay, so let's actually try to stop the causes of Alzheimer's. From the last episode, you might remember that APP is cleaved by PS1 and PS2, and this contributes towards the main component of plug. So we could actually try to block the activity of PS1 and PS2. This would lead to reduced formation of plug and thereby could stop the progression of the disease. However, this approach is not very realistic. Since PS1 and PS2 do not only cleave APP, but other very important proteins, we might have a lot of difficulties by blocking their activities. This could actually be lethal for the patient in the long term. Moreover, we also do not really know if plaque is the main contributing factor of Alzheimer's disease or if it's just a side effect of something else. As mentioned in the last episode, we sometimes find extensive plaque in the brains of people who had not shown any particular symptoms of Alzheimer's disease. Okay, so let's try something else. In the last episode, we've talked about the possible implications of inflammation in the pathogenesis of Alzheimer's disease. So we could actually try to decrease the activity of immune cells in the brain, and thereby we could try to cure Alzheimer's disease. In this regard, treatments with non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, or NSAIDs, might be interesting for us. These drugs have anti-inflammatory effects by blocking the COX enzyme, which is involved in immune and inflammatory responses. NSAIDs are currently used for the treatment of rheumatoid arthritis. Studies have found that patients with rheumatoid arthritis, which were treated with NSAIDs, have a lower risk of developing Alzheimer's disease in their lifetime. And in cultured cells, it was found that NSAIDs dramatically decreased the production of amyloid beta 
the main component of plug. This means that NSAIDs might really cure Alzheimer's, right? Well, not really. Clinical trials of NSAIDs in Alzheimer's patients have shown little or no effect, so they have been rather disappointing. This means that NSAIDs cannot cure the disease once it has occurred. However, they might be useful to prevent the disease in the first place. What we can see by now is, is that we could try to cure Alzheimer's using different approaches, but most of them probably fail. To give you some context, over 99% of all clinical trials involving Alzheimer's disease in the last 15 years have failed. This is mainly because we have yet to unravel the underlying causes and the pathogenesis of Alzheimer's disease. Therefore, a lot of basic research needs to be conducted in order to find a cure. To make it even harder, Alzheimer's disease normally starts to develop 10 to 20 years prior to the first clinical symptoms. And by the time Alzheimer's disease is recognized, the brain is already hugely damaged. So besides understanding the underlying causes, we need to develop techniques to diagnose Alzheimer's disease prior to the occurrence of the first clinical symptoms. In this manner, we could try to detect so-called biomarkers in the blood, the cerebrospinal fluid, or by using neuroimaging. Biomarkers are defined as molecules which are found in a specific disease or a specific process in the body. If, for example, we take a blood sample from an asymptomatic person and we find an altered set of inflammatory molecules or high levels of amyloid beta, then we can try to predict the risk for the disease and immediately start the treatment. But for now, we are not very close to find a cure for Alzheimer's disease. But we are starting to understand the disease and find the first biomarkers. And as in the history of science, complicated questions have always been answered. New generations of researchers will eventually find a cure for Alzheimer's, one of the greatest challenges of our aging society. If you're interested in this or similar topics, let me know in the comment section. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell button in order to stay informed about the greatest inventions in biomedical history. And with that, I'll see ya.